Welcome to Episode 8 of The Closest They Came, a series where we take a look back on the days when drivers, winless at NASCAR's highest level, came painfully close to etching their names into the history books. Today, we'll be taking a look back on Kenny Wallace's race in the 2001 Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400, taking the series to the Fall Rockingham race for the second time. His first NASCAR success would come in the Bush series, where he would make his first start in 1988, and by 1994 had earned five victories and finished in the top ten in points five times, including a second-place run in the 1991 championship. After making a handful of starts in 1990 and 91, Wallace would officially pursue the Cup Series full-time in 1993, driving the number 40 car for Felix Sabatis and would compete for Rookie of the Year. He would gain sponsorship from Square D and join Philmar Racing in 1995, eventually moving on to Andy Petrie Racing after the 1998 season. Entering the fall 2001 Rockingham Race Weekend, Wallace had earned five top five and 24 top 10 finishes, with a best finish of second having come on two occasions. On Saturday, he would claim the ninth win of his Bush Series career, taking home the checkers in the Sam's Club 200. Jeff Green is out of gas. The leader's out of gas. And the championship goes away as Green runs out of fuel on that black day. Fire the wall. Fire the wall, turn one. Leaders are racing back for the checkered flag. It was Kelly Denton that got into the wall. Kenny Wallace is the leader. First win for Kenny Wallace since 1996 in the NASCAR Bush Series. What a finish. Kenny Wallace, ninth career win at his first here at Rockingham. Filling in for the injured Steve Park on Sunday, he would start from the front row, having qualified on the pole for the third time in his career, averaging 154.69 miles per hour. Expectations would be high going in, due to this being the same car and team that had won the spring race. Now Kenny is driving his ninth race in the Winston Cup Series in relief of the injured Steve Park. Perhaps it's appropriate that in this frustrating year filled with more hurt than humor, the two of the nicest guys in the garage both got to be number one. Everybody says, well, you know, this car is really fast here. I said, look, I love the hell out of Steve Park, but I, I have a feeling it's the car. So I want to say hi to Steve and thanks for finding this setup for me, pal. <laughs> That number one car starts first today. Kenny Wallace, can it finish first again for the Rockingham sweep? Well, it done it once, and it can do it again. The car's handling well, you know, so we'll see. It's a it's a new beginning, a new day, and yesterday was different, and the sun's shining again today. It's a great weekend going for you so far. You're on the pole on Friday. You win the Bush race on Saturday. Did the 40, did one car help the 48 car yesterday, or you think maybe the 48 <laughs> is going to help the one win today? You know, things are going right, Benny. I can't explain it. You know, I've worked hard on my Bush car for years here, setup-wise, and it finally played into our hands. And, um, you know, the one car, it's got a history here. Paul Andrews is an incredible chassis, man, and uh, Steve worked hard for that. We're here to finish it off and try to get two wins and sweep Rockingham this year. Okay, so when is Steve Park going to put his seat in your car and get your seat out of his car? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I've been driving Steve Park's seat, so that's a really? good thing. I haven't changed anything. I just put the steering wheel down and adjusted the mirror, left his name on the car. I mean, his uniforms are still in there. I haven't. All I've done is take over the driving. How's he doing? Steve's doing real good, but, it, it, you know, it, nothing contradicting from what Ty North said. Steve's still got double vision. He needs some time. And, uh, you know, as frustrating it is, we all don't know when he's going to be back. Right. We're just rooting him on. He would fire off well on the initial start, but the race would be slowed quickly after contact between Kyle Petty and Dale Jr. sent Petty into the path of Bill Elliott. Trouble, turn one. One car is spun. It's Kyle Petty. He's been collected by Bill Elliott. After going back to green on lap seven, Wallace would settle in and maintain the lead until he was caught by Tony Stewart on lap 61. We'll see the car all over from the bottom to the very top. Major has taken third from Atwood. Bobby Hamilton is to his outside. Looking for fourth spot. 
he's got it. Tony Urens going Bucci on the car said this is not Junior's favorite racetrack. But after this weekend, it might be Kenny Walsh's favorite racetrack of all time. Won the pole here on Friday in this car, won the NASCAR Busch Series race yesterday, and in the hunt for his first NASCAR Winston Cup victory, though it's early in the event. They want Kenny Walsh, this one car, Bolsinger, he has not ventured off the bottom of the racetrack. Matt, what do you got for us? Benny, Kenny Walsh was very comfortable running the bottom, but his Gucci, Paul Andrews, said try the high side because three or four other cars are actually faster than you on the high side. That's where you see Ricky Craven, the 25 and 55 cars. So Kenny went up high, but he said he felt better on the bottom, so he was going to go back down to the bottom. But he did search around a little bit, trying to see maybe that one car might feel a little better at a different part of the racetrack. There up front, the leaders caught the tail end of the field. Todd Bodine running in 41st place, about to be overtaken by leader Kenny Wallace. 36 laps complete. Kenny Wallace has led them all so far at Rockingham. His brother Brett just overtaken by the leader Kenny Wallace. Carl Long and Buckshot Jones have also been lapped under the green flag. It's amazing how well that Kenny Wallace, how much better he's running since he moved up the racetrack. Second leader of the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400. Man, was that easy. You can see how much less racetrack the 20 cars using than everybody else. The one and the 32 slide right up to the wall in turn three and four. But the 20 car is, is staying a little bit lower, which means he does have a good handling car right now. Tony Stewart started 10th. He's taken over the lead after Kenny Wallace led the opening 61 circuits of the race. He would remain in the top 10 through the next fuel run. Johnny Benson has just moved into the fifth position. Passing Rusty Wallace, Ward Burton came with him. Benson up from the 39th starting spot to the top five in the opening quarter of this race. Great run. Our UPS Track Fact focuses in on first career NASCAR Winston Cup wins here at The Rock. I guess that shows I'm not as old as I thought it was. I don't remember two of those. I remember Mark Martin and Ward Burton winning their, getting their first victories here. Bill Weber, what do you have to add in trials and tribulations today? Well, Benny, if they gave an award for being close to getting your first win, Benson would have already wrapped that up and could head home. But having another strong run here, had a great pit stop, no changes, just more tires and fuel. So it's a strong run. Working his way through some lap traffic, and you see the gap up to the leader, Joe Nemechek, there. Speeds at the line. Well, that time Nemechek got through a little quicker. Well, how about Kenny Wallace? Hadn't heard from our pole sitter in a bit. There's... Taking back the lead briefly on lap 173 during pit stops, just before Carl Long hit the wall in turn four on lap 177, bringing out the second yellow of the day. Kenny Wallace takes over as the leader after Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart and Joe Nemechek hit it. Kenny yet to come to the pit lane. There he is. Kurt Busch moves up to second. Again, not having made his pit stop. Sterling Marlin and Ricky Craven give up top ten spots to pit road, and here comes your leader. Well, they realize they cannot stay on the racetrack they found the first time. And we see Carl Long has made some contact with the wall. Is he going to bring out the caution flag? Kenny Wallace is in, making his pit stop. I, I don't think Carl's going to be able to get down. Caution. Caution's out. Matt? And Kenny Walls is in. They will make a track bar adjustment. They do right sides, and he's gone because of the caution. Could be a tough break for Kenny Walls. Get off that end of pit road fast because Kurt Busch, the leader, is coming to it. Well, this could make things interesting. Very good chance we are. Very good chance we are. We're going to have to wait until the field comes back around to the start-finish line, but there is an excellent chance. The restart would come on lap 188 with Wallace lined up in second. An intense battle with the cars on the tail end of the lead lap would ensue. Tail end of the lead lap in front of them. Now this boat is real racing, trying to stay in front of that leader, stay on the lead lap. Bobby Labonte, Ward Burton, Matt Kenseth, Dale Jarrett, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Sterling Milan, and Tony Stewart are in front of the leader on the tail end of the lead lap open for a quick caution. And look, look at that 97 car. And here comes 32, Ricky Craven. He's trying to get up alongside the 97 car. Kurt Busch, the only one who not hit it under the green when that caution came out for Carl Long getting into the wall. He would get around Bush on lap 191, taking back the top spot. Craven 
Kevin gets by. Here comes the battle for the lead. Kenny Wallace, the one car, and the 97 for the lead. Kenny Wallace led 64 laps in this thing so far. Kenny Wallace takes the lead on the backstretch, coming off two. Coming up on halfway here at Rockingham, 197. Will be the midway point of the race. Kenny Wallace, your new leader. Third time today, Kenny Wallace has led. Remember, Kenny started on the pole. He's driving the car that Steve Park took to victory lane here in the season's first Rockingham event back in late February. A heated battle with Sterling Marlin would wear his tires and allow Joe Nemechek to close in, eventually giving up the lead on lap 225. You know, a lot of questions about what Kenny Wallace is going to be doing next year. He is substituting for the injured Steve Park in this one car, not knowing how long it's going to be before Steve comes back. What about it, Kenny? What's going to happen next year for you in this Winston Cup level? I got a lot of great things happening for me right now, and I will be able to tell everybody of Atlanta what I'm going to do. It's just that, you know, when you're dealing with delicate situations like this about what I'm going to do, uh, it just doesn't it come overnight, and uh, you just can't talk about it because there's a lot of things involved. So I'm excited about next year, whatever I do, and uh, we'll know at Atlanta for sure. Hey, Sterling is doing everything he can right now to stay on that lead lap. He's driving for all he's worth. Kenny, one of the drivers seeking that elusive first career NASCAR Winston Cup win. Could it be today here at Rockingham? Just past the halfway point of the race, he's in great shape. He's your leader. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Past the midway point of the race, watching a great fight for the lead. Joe Nemechek trying to take second from Kurt Busch and the lead from Kenny Wallace all at once. Well, he had Kurt Busch, but Busch has that great runoff too, takes the second spot back. All right, Nemechek's got him this time. So Joe up to second. Joe has already led two different times, total of 60 laps in this one. Nemechek started in 13th position. And here he goes. Kenny Wallace spent a long time fighting with Sterling Marlin to try and put him a lap down. Did he use up a little too much in his car too soon? He probably did, and the worst part about it, he was never able to put the 40 car Marlin a lap down. Once again, here's Nemechek. Check has run seven Winston Cup races here at Rockingham. His best finish was a 15th place run this past February. He's never finished on the lead lap here. He's never led at Rockingham until today. Well, he's trying it one more time. And still, Joe Nemechek working Kenny Wallace for the lead. Nemechek just can't make his car work well enough down low to complete the pass. And these two cars have... Good job, man. Keep on your race. That pulled away from the 97 car of Kurt Busch. That's Kenny Wallace's spotter, Stevie Reeves, talking to him. Well, the spotters are doing an outstanding job. For instance, Joe Nemechek's spotter is Shannon McGlamory. He's not only helped him work his way through traffic, but he's told him throughout the day which parts of the track are working better, whether it's high, whether it's low, where the one car is running, what might be the best way to get around him. So while Andy Petrie has encouraged him from the pit box to be patient, Shannon upstairs is telling him the best way to weave his way around the track. There are three guys driving that car, not one. He's got to run this time off turn two. Let's see if he can make it stick off four. I think he's going to slide up right in front of Kenny Wallace and take the lead away. Third time today, Joni Machet has led. As the leaders would employ alternating strategies of short pitting and staying out, Wallace would lead laps 269 and 270 before making his stop. 
as we go to Matt. They took the track bar adjustment for the last stop out of the one car because Kenny Wallace said the car got too tight. Eddie Naraki also pulled the tear away, off the windshields to give Kenny a little better visibility. No other adjustments than that. And the cycle of pit stops is completed. New leader, Kurt Busch. Part of the complication of this track when you got guys on different tire speeds, if you will. And we see Jeff Gordon pitted earlier than these two cars were seeing of Kenny Wallace and Jerry Nadeau. And he is no contest to these cars. With those pressure tires, they just simply drive by. And that's a race for fourth position between Kenny Wallace and Jerry Nadeau. Just six cars on the lead lap now. Push Johnny Benson, Joni Macek, Wallace Nadeau, and Ward Burton. And that's it. Why? You know, that's certainly not your typical NASCAR Winston Cup race, but we've gone so long under the green flag today, and this racetrack surface that just chews on those tires. He would remain in the top five on the following run before the final round of pit stops would occur. Wallace would lead lap 333 before pulling in for his stop. Eddie Wallace, Bill, is trying to sweep the weekend. He won a Bush race yesterday. He just climbed a third in the Winston Cup car, passing the 10 of Johnny Benson. He's pitting in the same stall, hoping to pick up his first Winston Cup victory. Kevin Bonomanian, the car chief, told me they have worked the tightness out of this car by backing up on the track bar adjustment they did on the previous stop. Right now, they're formulating a plan for their last stop. Paul Andrews tells me they can go to about lap 365 on fuel if they have to, but a lot of other teams are going to pit earlier, and they've been following what the leaders have done today. Kenny Wallace in for his final stop, his best career finish with a second at Talladega following Dale Earnhardt. Now he's hoping to pick up his first win in one of Dale Earnhardt's cars. No adjustments on the one car, and he's down and away. Good stop. He would briefly begin to close on the lead, being on fresher tires during the final run. Before the wear would level off, and he would come up just short, finishing second to Nemechek. Second place runner Kenny Wallace just took that position away from Johnny Benson. And we've still got 24 laps to go here yesterday. At this point in yesterday's Bush Series race, Jeff Green had a romp. I I'll tell you what, Joe is sliding that car all over the place. Right now, these guys are just trying to keep these cars as, as straight as possible. It's almost like driving in slow motion because the racetrack feels like ice right now. And if you watch through the windshield, you can see Joe's hands moving left to right. He's trying to keep that car pointed in the right direction as much as he can. There's just no grip left in the tires. Bad news for Joe Nemechek. Second place, Kenny Wallace, is consistently last faster than he, lap after lap. Question is, is there enough time for Kenny to get to him? Kenny Wallace was gaining. Kenny Wallace in the one car was gaining. And looked like he might catch Nemechek with about five laps to go. But now, Nemechek has started to stabilize that lead at about four and a half seconds. The two running about identical lap times the last couple of circuits around, both in the 26.3s. Going to be a good day for Kenny Wallace. Going to come up with a second place finish. So for that number one car, a win and a second at Rockingham and two tries this season. Outstanding for them. November 2001. It's victory number two. Go down there. Yeah. Joe Nemechek wins at Rockingham. Wallace would go on to have two more top ten finishes in his career and continue making Cup Series starts through 2008 when he would come home 12th at Talladega driving for Michael Waltrip. He would also run a few more full-time seasons in the then NASCAR Nationwide Series, the best being 2011 where scoring 11 top 10 finishes would earn him a 7th place points finish. Kenny Wallace's racing resume speaks for itself, including his continued success dirt racing around the country to this day. A standout in the Bush Series and respected driver amongst his peers, he rarely had the opportunity in top equipment at the cup level. The handful of occasions he was in a solid ride, he showed he had what it took.